As we look back on the last year and a half that The Division has been in existence, it has gone through seven major content releases, and with Update 1.8 set to launch this week, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the past seven updates and touch on the highs and lows of each content release. Each update brought new content and meta changes, and although they were not all met with universal praise from the community, they have all contributed in some way, shape, or form to where we are now. So without further delay, let's jump right into episode 4 of this series and take a quick look back at update 1.4. What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and in today's Division video, I decided to take a trip into the past of my beloved Tom Clancy title and touch on some of the changes that Update 1.4 brought to the live game. Now, this is Episode 4 of this series, and in case you missed the first three episodes where I reviewed Update 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3, I will leave a link to those past episodes in the video description below. Update 1.4 went live on all platforms on October 25th, 2016, and unlike updates 1.1 through 1.3, featured no new incursions or game modes. Instead, Update 1.4 was more a study in clerical work, as the patch notes for this update were 38 pages long and were completely focused on weapon balance, skill reworks, loot balancing, and the newly introduced World Tier System. Completely centered on giving level 30 players the ability to customize the difficulty of the environment and NPCs inhabiting that environment, the World Tier System gave agents the choice of what difficulty game they wanted to engage in. Tier 1 pitted agents against level 30 NPCs with gear score 163 items available for looting. Tier 2, level 31 NPCs with gear score 182 rewards, and this was the first world tier that allowed players to participate in challenge difficulty and incursions. Tier 3, level 32 NPCs with 204 gear score rewards, and finally Tier 4, level 33 NPCs with 229 gear score rewards. Huge changes were made to loot drops with global changes being implemented across the board that gave all NPCs the chance to drop high-end and gear set items with the tougher veteran and elites having a higher chance to drop these items. In addition, gear set weighting was removed from all activities except incursions. This meant that any gear set could now drop from any activity. Weekly and daily assignment caches now scaled with the player's current gear score and field proficiency was added in this update that allowed a player to gain XP past level 30 in order to earn loot caches. Search and Destroy and HVT missions received numerous changes including more intel drops for completing missions, adding 40 new HVT contracts to the contract pool, Intel prices to purchase the contracts were reduced overall and normalized to avoid overlapping costs. Group scaling was added to scale to the group size. The difficulty of HVT contracts were lowered slightly, and the NPC types for search and destroy missions were changed to mostly normal and veterans instead of elite level NPCs. And finally, rewards were updated for all high value and high risk contracts for increased loot drops as well as guaranteed Phoenix credits for completing the hardest missions. Underground was modified to allow players to gain XP past level 40 and earn more underground caches. And underground loot drops were standardized for normal, hard, and challenge modes now guaranteeing certain loot drops. Changes to incursions were not absent from Update 1.4, with Falcon Lost finally receiving checkpoints after each C4 explosion. On Dragon's Nest, the Four Horsemen farm cover was modified to prevent players from avoiding the RC car explosions. Ability cooldowns were recalibrated to now reset when the group wiped and respawned at the last checkpoint, and gear weighting for incursions was modified to not guarantee specific gear sets, but each incursion would now guarantee specific gear slot items. Falcon Lost would now guarantee gloves and masks, clear sky, body armor and holsters, and dragon's nest, backpacks and knee pads. Incursions also received updated reward loot drops for challenge and heroic modes to include high-end gear, gear set items, 
high-end weaponry, high-end mods, chances for a named weapon, and Phoenix credits. Gear received a massive amount of changes in Update 1.4, which included removing the skill bonus from all gear. Instead, additional slots were added to gear dedicated to performance mods, with two on the backpack, one on the holster, and one on the knee pads. Fixed base stats were added to gear items for main attributes, with 182 gear having a value of 48. 204 gear received a fixed value of 101, and 229 gear received a fixed main attribute score of 148 for firearms, stamina, and electronics. Armor received an enormous overhaul in Update 1.4, with armor values receiving differed damage mitigation values depending on the world tier you were in. The damage mitigation cap was reduced to 70%, and reaching that cap would now require agents to spec heavily into this one gear stat. Health on kill bonuses were reduced by a whopping 50%, and skill haste was now directly affecting skill cooldowns by the same amount. So if you had 10% skill haste, it would reduce skill cooldowns by 10%. Gear scores were reduced across the board in an attempt to better fit agents into world tiers, with 191 gear score items being reduced to have a gear score of 163. 214 gear score items were now gear score 182, 240 gear score items were reduced to a gear score of 204, and 268 gear set items were changed to have a gear score of 229. All five-piece gear set bonuses were removed from the game, and all 14 gear sets received changes, some small, some large, and the blind gear set was reworked entirely to become Banshee. Now, for those of you wanting to see what changes took effect in Update 1.4 for each gear set, I will include links to each gear set change video that I published and posted to my channel back in October of 2016 with before and after statistics and my general impressions of each gear set. Many gear talents received minor tweaks in Update 1.4, including astute, cunning, decisive, forceful, inventive, perceptive, rapid, Reckless, Refreshed, Relentless, Robust, Savage, Specialized, Sturdy, Technical, and Tenacious. Furthermore, Chain Reaction received a decrease to its damage bonus by 50%, from 40% to 20%. Global changes to skills included a newly installed Curve of Diminishing Returns versus the older, linear scaling method. Hard caps on most skills were removed, and expected skill power was changed to a higher value, with skill power from electronics being multiplied by three times. Skill haste was now capped at 60% to prevent too low cooldown timers, and all skills received a mandatory 5 second minimum cooldown timer. Skills like First Aid, Life Support, Mobile Cover, Seeker Mines, Turret, and Ballistic Shield all received strengthened portions to their core mechanics, while Pulse and Smart Cover received minor nerfs. Signature Skills received a shared cooldown mechanic, where while in a group, agents would be immune to the same signature skill for 30 seconds after the first one runs out. Signature Skills also received a rework, with Recovery Link receiving quite a few favorable changes, while Tactical Link and Survivor Link both received reductions in all bonuses across the board. Major changes were seen in the gameplay in general, with the time to kill enemy NPCs being lowered, and players' ammo capacity was increased by 50% after reaching level 30. Incendiary rounds and explosive rounds would no longer apply status effects like stagger and on fire, and accuracy was reduced for a short duration after performing a combat role. The scavenging gear talent was removed from the game, and player grenade damage would now scale with the current world tier to ensure consistent efficiency against NPCs across all world tiers. Shotgunner NPCs received damage falloffs and accuracy reductions in an attempt to limit their range and lower their lethality in long to mid-range combat. Players' health would now progressively regenerate while out of combat, and an update was made to the way NPCs reacted to players' threats, allowing players to more predictably manage enemy aggro. Weaponry was not exempt from the sweeping changes in Update 1.4, with the M60 and M249 both receiving large base damage increases. 
In addition, the SCAR H, SRS, and M44 Marksman rifles also received generous base damage increases. However, the changes were not all aimed at increasing base damage, with the MP5, Vector, SMG9, AUG, PP19, and TA21 submachine guns all receiving small damage decreases along with the L86 light machine gun. Many agents lamented when they received word that the vaunted G36 assault rifle, X45 pistol, and M1A marksman rifles were all receiving base damage decreases, while the MP7 was hit with an overwhelming 27.6% base damage decrease. Global changes to weaponry and DPS were also installed in this update that affected DPS calculation, weapon mods and their major and minor bonuses, Weapon mods were merged into one with horizontal stability and initial bullet stability now being merged into one category of stability, and hipfire accuracy was merged into accuracy. Damage bonuses were changed from multiplicative to additive, and almost all of the weapon talents were modified significantly or tweaked to make them work within the confines of the update changes. The weapon talent mechanics themselves weren't changed, but the RNG range of the talent gains were modified from a range value to a set value, and the restored weapon talent was completely removed from the game. Update 1.4 brought a further 58 items to the bug fix list, including general gameplay, the underground, skills, talents, controls, gear sets, and user interface. Some of our most hated bugs were starting to appear in this update with this bug fix list, with some of my personal favorites being a bug where first aid effect would not apply immediately after triggering the skill, a bug where fire damage dealt to a player using the ballistic shield would be dealt to the player instead of the shield, a bug where skills would be stuck on cooldown indefinitely in certain situations, and a bug where audio would drop out completely on PS4. My overall impressions of Update 1.4 were one of relief. Update 1.3 had been a long grind where we as agents were heavily outgunned by most NPCs, especially in heroic difficulty missions. With the decrease in time to kill and improvement of gear, mods, and weaponry, we were finally back on even footing with the endgame content that the Division had to offer. However, that long slog through 1.3 exacted a heavy cost on the player base, and I can remember that I had lost nearly half my friends list on PS4 as they had simply walked away from the game after encountering the nightmare that was update 1.3. Loot drops were normalized and greatly enhanced and led many an agent to exclaim, it's raining gear! Remember before this update? Loot drops were not guaranteed and were completely up to the RNG loot system. There was an overwhelming amount of changes to gear sets, gear talents, and weapon talents, and it took us a little bit of time to digest all the new modifications to our gear and weaponry. The Hungry Hog was the new meta, and it reigned supreme over all weapons in the game for both PvP and PvE due to its massive base damage increase. As a longtime fan of LMGs in the division, I was so pleased to finally see an LMG pushed to the forefront, and for many agents, this was the very first time they had ever wielded an LMG. Looting a Hungry Hog would require agents to enter the Dark Zone and take their chances at looting one as a boss drop, but ultimately, it was well worth the danger, as it was just such an overwhelmingly awesome weapon in Update 1.4. And finally, I remember the dramatic shift to armor, and if you wanted to survive in-game or Dark Zone action, it was absolutely mandatory that you spec into armor. Now unfortunately, this dramatically reduced our gear diversification, as you were putting yourself at a serious disadvantage if you had not specced into this major attribute. Overall, Update 1.4 was badly needed relief from Update 1.3 but the changes to armor and damage mitigation really tarnished what could have been a really good update and forced players into cookie cutter builds. This is going to wrap up episode four of this quick look back on the history of the division's updates, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this look into the past. If you could take the time to rate the video with a huge thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. If you want some more of my division content in your lives, please take the time to hit that sub button and follow me on Twitter. Until my next Division video, this has been Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer saying peace out.